So what we're going to do today is a mini version of a lab on types of radioactivity, their variation with distance, and what factors change the penetration of the radioactivity. So each sample looks something like this. There's a little disk. It tells you the sample, the type of radioactivity, the half-life, and the microcurie. The one microcurie is the dose. Most of this disk is a piece of plastic. So what I'm going to do first is calibrate the machine and do our background count. So I'm only going to do this once because it's a little boring to watch. But the machine is set to count for one minute. And what we're doing now is there's no radioactive source under here. So I'm going to hit count. And what we're getting now is what's known as background radiation. This is the natural radiation in the environment where we are. The world is naturally radioactive to some small extent. And so every time we measure the radioactivity from a sample, we're also getting these counts from what's called natural background radiation. So we're going to have to subtract those out each time, and that will give us what's called the net counts per minute. Now, I'm going to do this three times, but I'm only going to show you the end result in the other two cases because watching this thing count for a minute isn't all that exciting. But you can see there's some radioactivity here. It's harmless. It, there's nothing you could do about it, and there's nothing you need to do about it. So the first thing you'll do in your data sheet is you'll record 31 counts per minute for sample for background radiation number one. So there's trial number two. 25 counts per minute. Now we'll do trial number three. There's trial three. So we're just going to average those three and round to the nearest whole number. And we'll call that our background radiation for each trial. So now we're going to do the alpha source. So this is a sample of polonium-210. We'll have the equations on the board in a second. I'm going to start counting. And I've put the sample on shelf number two. So if you look here, the sample is on the second shelf. And it's going to stay on the second shelf for every, every trial. That's just a, something that will make consistent throughout. So you can see we're getting quite a few counts here. So it'll be pretty easy to see what happens if we can block the counts with something. So remember, this is an alpha emitter. So this is emitting a helium nucleus. Okay. You can see we're going to get you know, close to 1,000 counts in a minute. And that way, it will be very easy to see if things are, if we can block them with various materials. So we got 985 counts. What you'll have to do is subtract the background from that to get the net counts per minute or net CPM. Now I'm going to put a piece of paper over the sample, and we'll see how much of the alpha radiation gets through the paper. So now we've taken the same alpha source, we've put it on the same shelf, and we've just laid a piece of paper over it. And you can see we were able to block a pretty high percentage of the radioactivity just with the piece of paper. Now I'm going to put another blocking material in between, and we'll see what happens. So here's what we got with the sample of a piece of aluminum metal as a blocker. You can see we blocked even more of the alpha particles. Lastly, I'm going to put a piece of lead, a much denser metal, on shelf one, and we'll see what happens. So here I put a piece of lead in between, and you can see we're down to 20 counts. And if you think about what our background radiation is, we might 
be awfully close to zero. If by chance, when you get your net counts per minute, you end up with the negative number, we'll just call that zero. Here's my beta source. This is strontium 90. I'm going to put it in. We're going to count for one minute and see what we get. So there's our count from the beta source alone, 2,492 counts per minute. We'll subtract the background radiation. Now we're going to see what happens when we put a piece of paper on, like we did with the alpha source. So we're coming up toward the end of the piece of paper over the beta source, and you can see we're getting very little change. It's almost exactly the same number of counts per minute, showing that the beta particles passed right through, and in fact it might even be a little bit more, and we'll talk about that when we do our notes, but essentially there's a little bit of a random nature to radioactive decay, but you can see the paper had no effect. Next, I'm going to try a piece of plastic. Here we're coming up on the end of the sheet of plastic, and you can see we're getting very little change again. If you remember before, we were about 22, 2300. Here we got 1900, so we blocked a very small percentage with that low density plastic. Now I'm going to replace that with the sheet of aluminum. Do the same thing again. So now we're coming up to the end of the aluminum, and this is about 25, 30 times thicker than aluminum foil we might have at home. So we're starting to block a sizable amount of them. If you think about um, the apron at the dentist's office, there we go, 868. Now I'm going to replace the aluminum with a thin sheet of lead. And we'll do the same thing. We'll reset, we'll start our count, and we'll see what we get. So now we're just to the end of the thin piece of lead. You can see we've taken out a pretty large percentage of all the radiation getting to the detector. Remember, we were well over 2,000 before. So now I'm going to replace the thinner piece of lead with an extremely thick piece of lead. I'm going to hit reset and count and we'll be seeing what happens. So now we're coming up to the end of the thick sample of lead and you can see we've definitely reduced the amount of radioactivity getting through to the detector and that completes the beta sample. Now we'll move on to the gamma sample. So the gamma sample actually gives off both beta and gamma but it's only the gamma we're going to detect here. So let's see what happens. So we're coming up to the end of the gamma sample alone, and you can see we've got 17,000 counts per minute. Then I'm going to replace that with the piece of paper like we did before. Put that in there. Reset, start counting, and we'll see what happens. So you can see the paper had essentially no effect on the gamma radiation, and given what we know about its penetrating power, that's what we'd expect. I'm going to take the paper out, replace it with a thin sheet of plastic, and reset, start counting. Coming up on the end of the plastic, and you can see lost a little bit of the radiation getting through, but not much. Now I'm going to replace the plastic with a piece of aluminum foil again, much thicker than household aluminum foil. Hit reset, start counting, and see what we get. So now we're coming up to the end of the thick piece of aluminum, and you can see we're blocking some, but the vast majority of the gamma rays are penetrating through that foil. So, let's see where we end up. A little over 9,100. Now I'm going to replace that with a sample of lead. Reset. Start counting. 
we're just about at the end of the gamma with the thick piece of lead. And you can see even a sample piece of lead that thick didn't block all of the gamma particles. So that completes the part of the lab involving the different sources and the distance. So here are the equations for the alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. So our alpha source was polonium-210. It gives off the alpha particle and the other product, sometimes called the daughter particle, is lead-206. The strontium-90 gave off a beta particle, an electron ejected from the nucleus, and the daughter particle was a yttrium atom. The gamma, which also gave off beta, our source was cesium-137, and you can see we got a gamma and a beta particle out of that, and the other product is the barium atom. So now what we're going to do is look at the effect of distance on the amount of radiation. We're only going to count for 10 seconds here, but the goal is to see the pattern, so it really won't matter. So now I've got this on shelf one. So I've put this as close as I can get it, and in the 10 seconds that it counts, you can see that we're getting up to 4,911 counts. Now I'm going to go to shelf two. Count again. And we've made this a little bit farther away, so let's see what happens to the amount of radiation detected by our counter. A little over 3,000. Now we're going to go to shelf four. I don't think we need to do every shelf to see the, the big picture here. Okay. So when we go to shelf four, we're down to 1,400. Now I'm going to go to shelf six. So we're, getting, we're making the distance quite a bit farther away than before, and you can see the amount of radiation being detected is quite a bit less. And there's nothing in between. And then I'm going to go to shelf 10, and this is as far away as we can do it with this setup. And you can see we're getting far, far fewer counts as the source is located farther away. So that wraps up the lab. We've looked at alpha, beta, gamma, penetrating power, what blocks them, and distance. And then your lab handout will have a place for you to record your data, do some calculations, and you'll turn the last section into a little graph. Thank you.